Hello, welcome to uh, St. Laveau's World Cinema. I'm your hostess, Betty St. Laveau. On this show, we look at international uh, cinema and tele, television. And I hope that you enjoy this um, particular genre. I certainly do. Since I was little, very little, Ma was always throwing those foreign films at us. So I'm just going to point out a couple that are near and dear to my heart. In this first episode, we'll check out three very quickly. And I'm not going to give so much um, the statistics um, like I do in the other uh, TV shows here at Orca. I'm just going to simply uh, state the plots and why they're beautiful and why maybe you should check them out. Okay, so the first one is one of my all-time favorite foreign films, and it's La Dolce Vita, directed by the genius who is Federico Fellini, starring Marcello Mastro Antonio, um, Rosemary Raw, Jean Moreau, um, uh, Anita Ekberg, uh, uh, and Lex Barker, the guy who played Tarzan, okay, and a whole bunch of other people. So this particular movie, I always felt, it is a bit semi-autobiographical because Federico, from what I remember, grew up, I think, in an outlying small town outside of Rome. And when he was a young man, he went to go make his fortune in the big city. On the cord uh, is part of his childhood. Um, but then Eve Deloney, I think, comes in between Omicord and this particular one, if I've got my facts straight. So basically, uh, in this particular movie, uh, Mocello, our journalist, uh, through a series of several vignettes, grows up. Um, Mocello's probably in his 20s when the movie starts, but. Um, our actor here, the very, uh, very handsome um, uh, Mr. Mastro Antonio, he uh, looks a bit older for his age. So uh, he might be in his 30s as he's still maturing. At any rate, the very scenes are him interviewing a famous Hollywood movie star and her jealous husband, going to an old castle. Uh, Italian family, uh, centuries they've had the castle, and the party is on times decadent and poignant. Uh, he and one of his pals go slumming one night, and in another vignette, his father comes to visit with disheartening and, um, again, maturing results on Mocello's part. So, there's something about Fellini movie that is, has a dreamlike quality. The first one I ever saw was Julia of the Spirits. I saw that when I was about 14 or 15. And as a teenager, uh, we're all used to American cinema. And when you watch a surrealistic movie in narrative form, you realize that there's other media mediums out there, other ways to express the story. So Federico is just near and dear to my heart. Uh, if you haven't ever seen a Fellini movie, I suggest that La Dolce Vita should be your first one. You're going to laugh and also be a little bit disturbed. But if you can't get to this one, please check out Omicord and Evidoloni. Evidoloni is uh, very hard for me to find at the moment. Okay, so the next movie we're going to check out is Jules and Jim, directed by Francois Truffaut. It's a French movie. Henri Serre and Oscar Werner play two best friends, and Jean Moreau plays the enigmatic woman who makes up part of this very disturbing and very disturbing, upon uh, disturbing love triangle. All right, so um, unfortunately, I don't have the author's name written down here, but it's a book. And Francois Truffaut, excellent, excellent director, uh, French New Wave, and an excellent critic of film, read the book, made the movie. And when 
the author watched the movie, he said to Francois Truffaut, you captured, you captured all, you captured the time period, you captured our relationships, and uh, you did a really good job. And what a treat. If Francois had never made another movie again, what an homage. That's better than a, a Oscar, you know what I mean? French Oscar. So um, um, this movie's not for the squeamish. It unfortunately was one of those movies that we, I'd overheard my parents talking about it over time. And then um, I think they went to do some drumming workshop and we're in Verscher. You know, I'm 12. And you, uh, out of all the put dinner on then and this and that was watch Jules and Jim. And they said that we'd like the movie. So the family lore and the family myth is, of course you like the movie. It's like, uh, no, there are parts of this movie I don't like. I don't. Um, and it's not that romantic. I mean, come on, all right? Love Triangle, that's not romantic. That's heartbreaking, OK? But the buddy part of it, just like in Casablanca, the relationship with men, it's wonderful. And Jean Moreau as Catherine, she's so beautiful. But um, what a hellcat, OK? I'm sorry, all right? so. I like this movie, and if you want to watch a great classic, the first half of this movie is so wonderful. And the last half, um, yeah, okay. It's, I've got a friend of mine, I showed her Chinatown. To this day, she's like, I can't believe you showed me that movie. Uh, just to let you know. She, I'll show her this movie, she'll be like, I can't believe it, she, all right. But um, in my family, uh, you know, when you watch movies like this, you have to kind of toughen up. So sometimes not all movies are, have happy endings, and sometimes they do. And if they do, they can be disturbing. Just want to let you all know. Okay, so uh, Jules and Jim, directed by Francois Truffaut, Henri Serre, Jean Moreau, and Oscar Werner. Check it out if you want. All right, so our last entry is not a movie per se. It is a, um, what do you call that? Uh, miniseries, and it's a British miniseries, and it is called Love in a Cold Climate, and it's based on the books by Nancy Mitford uh, called Love in a Cold Climate and the Pursuit of Love. This eight-part miniseries, and I think it's filmed in 74, I didn't put down the, um, I didn't put down when it was shot, but, um, if you've grown up in a large family, you'll totally get everything that's going on here. And if you are British, you, you're totally going to get it because you know about the Midfords. And um, if you love a great story without explosions, and it's just about people and about how they are re relating with one another, you're going to love it, all right? So um, Nancy Midford was the eldest of the famous Midford sisters and son. And um, all of those women had extremely interesting lives in the time, be be a little bit before and during the Second World War. Uh, Ms. Midford became the French lady writer of the family and proceeded to sprout and begin what they call the Midford industry, but I don't really see it as an interest inter industry or um, a firm or a college industry. I just see it as um, all those women as sisters were also very different. And I have five sisters and we are all so very different. Um, you can appreciate the fact that even though you come have the same genetic pool, you're going to take different stances on um, ideologies. So at any rate, as I watched this all last weekend, it's enjoyable. It's very funny. Some of the characters are characters. Please understand that. It is the British upper class. Please understand that. And yes, that mansion is a house. It's not a mansion that they live. That's what they call a house. Okay. So, um, the Ratcliffe children, which I remember, that's their name fictionally, are indulged, but harmlessly so. Uh, they continually are testing their parents 
all the petty jealousies and adorations which exist in a family are displayed here very realistically. And joy and tragedy are experienced by this family. So um, it's not only a story about family, a coming of age story, we see them all mature and progress, interact with one another, romance occurs, and um, so does anti-romance. All right, so I hope you all check that out, and please check out the books too, um, if you do, and Mary S. Lovell's wonderful The Midford Sisters will also give you some insight about um, the relationships and the family. However, these fictional accounts, Pursuit of Love and Love, of, uh, love in a Cold Climate, um, Pursuit of Love, I believe, is the first one. Please read that, Love in a Cold Climate, and I've been asking Kellogg Hubbard, bless their hearts, for um, a copy on interlibrary loan of Don't Tell Af Alfred, which is the third book by Nancy Mitford, but I can't find it, but maybe I can hunt for it on Amazon. All right, that's it for me. This is the first episode of World Cinema St. Laveau. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Um, I didn't really give a lot of statistics about the movies per se. I think if you all choose to rent or try and check these out on YouTube, please do. You can certainly find Love in a Cold Climate on YouTube. And you want the 19, you want the first version, you want the 1974 version. 1972, 1974. And um, at any rate, uh, take care of one another. Check out something outside our beautiful republic here. Until next time, don't watch any bad European or African or Asian or South American movies. Until I see you next time, bambinos, ciao.